guys welcome back to my youtube channel and welcome to my bookshelf tour slash turning around all the books that i have not read that is on my bookshelf how i'm gonna do it is i'm probably gonna go across the shelf show you what the book is and then turn it around if i haven't read it if that makes sense probably maybe i have done it with my books before but then i I'm doing it again so my bookshelf is kind of composed of classics which is like just these books here and then it's like romance and then supernatural romance on the end and the bottom shelf is general fiction and then thriller all the way across i'm going to start at this side of my shelf and then work across and then work across so this starts with a um, Jane Austen box set by the Folio Society. It's Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility and Emma. And I'm not going to turn these around because A, they're expensive and B, I've read two out of three of them. I just haven't read Emma. So I'm not going to turn those ones around. Then it is Vladimir Nabokov's Lolita. And I have read this and it was incredibly... Mm. And then I have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, and this was a gift from my father, so it's kind of beaten up, like a little bit, because I've had it for a few years, but it was also secondhand, and it was a gift from my dad, but I have read it. Next is A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. I have not been in the mood to read this book since I bought it, basically, I know it's going to absolutely mess my brain up. So, so yeah, I have not read Stephen Hawking's book. But then we move on to romance, and it starts with The Grimms Were White by Charlotte Lindhurst. I think that's how you say her name. Charlotte Lindhurst. And I have not read this book. And then we move on to P.S. I Love You by Cecilia... Ahern? I don't know. And I read like half of this book but I DNF'd it because it is so thick and it is so long. So I'm going to say that I haven't, yeah I'm going to say that I haven't read it because I do intend on finishing it one day. And then I have You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Poggle I think. And I got this as a book recommendation from a friend and I've never got around to reading it. And then next I have the After the One and then the One After the One duology by Cass Lester, which I have not got round to reading yet. Next I have They Both Die at the End, which I have in fact read and I did in fact love. I know a lot of people hate this book. I loved it. And then I have The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. Again, I have not read this book and I have never read a Christina Lauren book. But I know so many people love her books that I really need to get around to reading this book. I know the general consensus of what it's about, but I've just never got around to reading it. So, backwards you go. And then, this is actually a recent purchase. I literally got this probably about two weeks ago. And it's the Terms and Conditions and Fine Print Duology by Lauren Asher. I have never read a Lauren Asher book and I know that she is pretty popular and a lot of people absolutely love her so I cannot wait to actually get around to reading these but again I've only had them for about two weeks so to go. nearing the end of the romance section I have a second hand husband by Claire Ka Kaelman? Kaelman this again was a recommendation from a friend that I've never got around to reading so and then I have the intimacy experiment by Rosie Danman. Danman? Um, this was quite popular on TikTok and that's when I got it a few months ago but I never got around to reading it. And then I have the Twilight series saga, the Twilight saga. I'm not going to turn this around because they are an absolute but to get out of the box that they're in. So I'm not going to turn them around but I have read Twilight and New Moon but I have not read Eclipse, Breaking Dawn, The Short Life of Brie Tanner or Midnight Sun. Going down to the second shelf, I have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I did in fact start because it went crazy viral on TikTok and everyone loves it, but I never finished it because I was in a bit of a book slump and this is quite a long book. It's like 400 and something pages and I literally didn't even get into it. I read probably like 20 or 30 pages and my bookmark is falling out. I, mean, I read probably like 20 or 30 pages and never actually got further than that so I never actually got into the book. So I'm going to say I didn't read it because I do intend to come back to it. 
The same thing happened with You Reached Sam. I saw so many people talking about this book being like, oh my god, it made me cry. And then I read the first few pages, never picked it up again and started reading something else. So I'm going to say I didn't read it because I do intend to come back to it. And then A Wedding on Christmas Street. This I've owned for about two years. And I always think it's highly inappropriate to read it because it's a Christmas book. So I should really read it this month, to be honest. But I have not yet read it. Because I just think it's inappropriate to read it when it's not Christmas. So I think this is like the third book so far on my bookshelf that was a recommendation from a friend that I bought and never read. So I did not read this yet. Oh god, this is not looking good. This is not looking good. The Bookkeeper of El Po by Chrissy Left. Left uh, I'm sorry I don't know how to pronounce that <laughs> and I have not read this yet I saw a stranger on a bus reading this the day after I saw somebody on TikTok talking about this and I was like you know what it's a sign I have to buy it so I bought it and I haven't yet read it half a world away I think in the works they have like free for five pounds and I'm pretty sure I had two books that I really wanted to buy and this was like the third one that I thought sounded interesting I bought just so I could get the deal so I have not read it yet um, this is relatively new. I've probably had it for about a month. This is The XX and I have not re yet read this. It's by Erin Sterling but I saw so many people talking about this in like November time when it was like autumn hauls, autumn TBRs, everything like that. So I bought it and I haven't yet read it. This is another like new purchase and it's The Atlas 6 by Olivia. Little Olivia Blake. But anyway, The Atlas Six, I bought this because Maddie Tales talks about this book all the time and she absolutely loves it. So I decided to invest and buy it. And again, I only bought this the same time that I bought the fine print duology. So I've only had it for about two weeks and I haven't got around to reading it yet. The next is, I've seen a few people talking about this, but I've owned it for quite a while. I've owned it for about two years. No, a year and a half, something like that. And it's everything I never told you and I haven't got around to reading it yet. Um, the next one I got in a charity shop because it just looks cool. And I think I was trying to read more fantasy and I bought this book and I have not even a clue if it's fantasy. I'm assuming it is. It's got to be fiction of some kind. But it's called Galileo's Dream by Kim Stanley Robinson. And it is massive. I have not got round to reading this yet simply because I'm intimidated by its size. I'm terrified of read starting that. I have another duology that I bought because Maddie talked about it on her channel um, and that is the Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom duology but yeah I haven't got around to reading these yet but I'm actually super excited because everyone loves these. If I hate them I'm going to be so mad. The next is the only Colin Hoover book I own and it's Verity by Colin Hoover. Um, I have read this and I found it deeply disturbing. The whole book, disturbing, plot twist, shocking, but it didn't make me like the book. Solid like three, this is the only one I'm giving a review to, solid two and a half stars. Didn't like it, it made me uncomfortable. And then I have One of Us is Lying which I have not read, it's by Karen M. McManus. But yeah, I have not re yet read this and I know some people are going to hate me because I have the Netflix cover, but kill me, I guess. And then I have this random book which is, I wanted to read, again, more fantasy. And I bought this, it is the second book in a series. And I have not yet cared enough to buy the first book and read the first book, plus this is huge. Nearly 600 pages. And it's the second book. I haven't read it. Short story, I haven't read it. Um, moving on is A Killer Came Knocking by S.B. Caves and again I have not yet read this. This I got in my crime and thriller era I guess like a year ago I just started reading like a whole load of crime books and I did find a few that I really really liked and then I found a lot that I really did not like. <laughs> And these are just the few victims that lay over from my era of crime reading that I have not yet read. Same backstory is A Man at the Window by Robert Jeffries. From my crime era that I never finished reading, but I never read this. Maybe I should when I find the motivation. Maybe I'll have a second crime era. You never know. These next three books 
uh, the Hopjoy, what is it called? The Fluxbrum Mystery series by Colin Watson. And I have Hopjoy Was Here, which is the first, Bump in the Road, which is the second, and Coughing Scarcely Used, which I believe is the third. I could be wrong, it could be like the wrong order, but I know Hopjoy Was Here is the first one. And I have read Hopjoy Was Here, but I haven't read the second like two and three yet so maybe once i've read these two i will invest in the rest of the thing but yeah currently only read the first one and honestly it's been like a year since i read it so maybe i should reread it we're nearing the end now and this was a i don't know if it was a gift or if i robbed it off my brother but this was my brother's book and now it's mine and it's darren shan's dark calling and i have read this back when i lived at my dad's house about a year ago uh the next one is lara Diamonds Dark Sky Island. Um, again, I read this about a year ago. It was a little bit predictable, but it was good. I have another one that was my brother's that for some reason I own, and that's Dark Moon Rising by Sheila Quigley. And I have not read this. I think my brother gave it to me, but I could have accidentally stole it off him. But I haven't read it yet. The second to last is a ran random hardback, which should be on the top shelf. But it is Alan D. Bottom, Bottom, The Course of Love. And I'm pretty sure it's like psychology rebranded as fiction. And I haven't read it yet, if you can't tell. I got it secondhand in a charity shop about a year ago and I expected it to be a romance book. But then I learned that it's not a romance book. And now I don't have the motivation to pick it up. And then finally I have another thriller and it's A Night School by Lee Childs. I got this again secondhand and didn't even realise that like it's a whole thing and there's like books prior to this that you need to read to get context but I don't know if you can read this as a standalone and I don't want to read an entire series just to read this just to hate it. So let me know if this can be read as a standalone and if it can I will read it but if it can't so that kind of finalises everything turned around on my bookshelf and this is shocking i guess that's gonna be my new motivation to actually read and to record because i'm very inconsistent with it but yeah thank you for watching my youtube video and i hope i see you again